my conference this morning deals with not one but two things. On the one hand, organ transplants and the much argued question of criteria of death. And on the other, this relation of this particular question, its ethical implications to what is the very center of Christian spirituality, charity. All the great fathers of the church, all the great doctors of the scholastic period, those who are doctors of the church in the narrow sense of the term, such as St. Bonaventure and St. Thomas, and we hope very soon, blessed John Scotus, as soon as we can get him canonized. And there are many others as well, all insist that without charity, there is no spirituality, or there is a spirituality, but it's not very holy. We often forget when we throw around the word, word spiritual, spiritual, well, if it's spiritual, it must be good. And the devil's very spiritual, but I don't think he is very good by any ordinary definition of what is meant by goodness, precisely because he is so contrary to God. God is holy by nature. We are holy. We are truly spiritual in the sense that God is spirit, spiritual to the degree that we share and practice that charity. Now what is interesting in this question, which you might think is only a medical question or at best only an ethical question in the sense of Aristotle or one of the ancients, and particularly in this particular, which you'll see is very close to a stoical mentality. There you go. What is the justification for modifying the traditional rules, language of the great textbooks and casebooks of moral theology as charity? Why wouldn't you, as it were, and which you'll see in a moment, but why wouldn't you agree to assisted suicide if you could help your neighbor? On the further point, didn't Christ commit suicide on the cross for our sake? And St. Maximilian Kolbe, that was one of the arguments of the Advocatus Diaboli, the devil's advocate in the process of beatification and canonization of St. Maximilian. Here he offered his arm for the fellow there in the concentration camp who injected the, injected the poison. Why he had despaired like all the rest in the play, we can understand that we don't blame him for that. And so he decided, as it were, where to uh, end it all. It was an, uh, not a heroic act of martyrdom, it was simply suicide. There, of course, suicide was considered traditionally as a, as a serious sin, a lack of courage, you know, an escape from suffering. And so we can see there is something very much to meditate on if we don't see clearly immediately the answer to those who say, okay, it's quite all right to, as long as you think the person is probably dead, that's enough, start cutting him up. But there have been people who have thought to be probably dead, who have all of a sudden, as it were, just before the cutting started, there's a recent case within the last year, I think, and, and in Texas, where the fellow came to at a certain point just before the knife went in. And it wasn't a resurrection. It was simply, as it were, nature taking his course. The fellow wasn't dead in the first place. In these cases, the traditional teaching of the church is probability, no matter how good, no, uh, no matter what the science, is not enough. Where there are questions of justice and eternal salvation, either you're absolutely certain that the fellow is stone cold and only a resurrection would bring him back to, uh, back to life, uh, back life, or you can't as it were, begin to treat him as though he were a corpse. So anyway, let us see, uh, let, let us see what is the dilemma at the present time, and there are several dilemmas, as we, you will see, but I just want to sketch the problem, and then, as it were, review a recent statement of Pope Benedict XVI to a Congress of, of, uh, of theologians, medical people, people meeting in Rome to discuss the whole question of brain death and the criteria that are to be used before, as it were, you can begin to take organs from what? From, 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 it's a very fine statement, and he has reiterates the tradition. He puts it in modern terminology, but he hasn't changed the meaning one iota. Oda. And it's very important because we see precisely at the point where, uh, where science 
the natural order, and sometimes what is referred to as the natural law, which governs that order insofar as it is personal. It was the ratio ordinis of the ancients, the very essence of order. Without order, there is chaos. Without order, there is the arbitrary. Without order, there is tyranny, slavery. Tyranny on the part of the one who determines, slavery on the one on the part who has to has submit to, to laws which are not really laws, but an abuse of, of power. And here we must recognize there is a fundamental problem also here further, really, even if we're not PhDs, even if we're not professional scientists, even if we do not have the training to actually, actually care for those who are sick. If we're not advocating that someone who simply has a good knowledge of theology go into the surgery and begin, as it were, operating. I don't think I would like that myself. No, no, I don't want a PhD or an STD to uh, be there. I want somebody who knows what he has the art of surgery. That's another matter entirely. But we see here uh, where two things come together. Science, and particularly the ultimate purpose of all empirical science, medicine. Caring for the human body, which is not simply another body, which is unique. It is an essential part of the human person. There is no human person, according to the ancient theologians, unless body and soul are united. Yes, the soul is personal. But the person is such that she has for a moment ceased to exist in the metaphysical sense of the term. When soul separates from body. Without this concept... We do not understand what the old moralists meant by integrity of the body. Normally speaking, life cannot be maintained without integrity. Whenever integrity, when you begin, well, I guess I've got two eyes, so I'll take out one and give it to you. Yeah, you who are failing in eye eyesight, or share your ear. Uh, we cannot simply say because there is our double organs that uh, the two organs don't pertain to integrity. From this derives the old term mutilation, which doesn't mean cutting your finger, which heals. That's not a mutilation in a moral sense. It means taking off an organ. It means suppressing a vital func of, of, of a function. Pope John Paul II pointed that out. If we don't, as we understand what these terms mean, we cannot see clearly what are the, what are the problems. And then when we come to the dilemma, Grandpa is said to be dying. Shall we pull the plugs, take the tubes out, let him starve as quickly as possible. That leads to a question. How sacrosanct is life? And who has the right to determine these things? We shall see that the teaching of Christ, as before him, in his uh, uh, first presentation of Moses, only God can make the rules concerning how human life is given. The difference between breeding of animals and procreation of pers uh, per 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 persons and how death which in the first instance is a natural thing, there's no particular obligation of God to give us the gift of immortality in the, in the, in the flesh uh, death is also a punishment after the fall of our first parents, but death in itself is not something essentially wicked and we don't like it, but it's not a sin to die Put it that way. A sin is far, far worse. But who, as a word, knows how to make death humane? Only the Lord. And any attempt to tinker with the, and this is one of the principles I want to stress, and it's one of the things that must be fundamental to any genuine spirituality, the willingness to be humble, to accept not the authority of a creature. That's exactly what the serpent was as suggesting, and very seductively, how many people today refuse to obey Christ, but they run, as the words of the first dictator, to come down the pipe as the Savior. Now we have, I, say, the, I have relatives in Germany who told me a few things about what happened when Hitler was allowed to take power. Talk to some Russians, or good Christians, about what happened for 75 years under that diabolical regime known as communism. Of course there is an attractive point, common life. But common life without, uh, without the supernatural virtue of charity is not possible in this life perfectly. Especially after the fall, property is necessary, not to make money, but to protect the integrity of the family and especially 
the responsibilities and duties of the father. And the modern economics doesn't take that into consideration. That's where the problem is. So all these things are things we need to reflect on to understand clearly the principles because they do pertain to a genuine cultivation of spirituality, not sentimentality, not sensational experiences that make me feel great. Boy, boy I'm the holy one now. Uh, 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 no. Very often we know in the spiritual life, yes, there are enthusiastic enthusiasms at the beginning. Yes, there's an enthusiasm at the beginning of marriage, but marriage is also a supernatural vocation. It's a holy thing. It's not a contract. Uh, as though you go out as we, uh, I give you so much and you give me so much and we'll go on as it were make, making do with all of our, uh, our faults and maybe breaking up when we decide that's the time to break, uh, break up. Uh, uh, break up. And all these things we seek as it were to grow in, uh, uh, grow in holiness but humbly. So uh, here first I, I get, get on with my, my point and get, uh, get up to the, the heart of this talk which is that recent statement where the Pope brings two things together. Yeah, the, the rules, traditional rules for organ transplants, government mutilations, etc. Et 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 their abuse, their reject, rejection and charity. Remember his first encyclical, Deus Caritas Est, God is love and who abides in love. But what, yeah, what is true love? He's insisting here on an objective norm because when there is no objective norm, when we say love is agape, there's no object at all, it's just that sense that you're generous, even to the point of committing suicide to be generous to somebody else. Is that love? No. Precisely because it is not love of God for his own sake above all, and therefore I accept it. We shall see. Secondly, that where we do not understand charity in that, that sense, as we no longer are a practical person, person, and you continue to live, even though as well. And thirdly, because between the two, there is a great mystery, like that of redemptive suffering. A person who can only suffer is doing more, if he unites himself with that, is doing more for his neighbor than those who are making a million a year. <laughs> and perhaps putting it in a foundation. There is an enormous difference between philanthropy, as it is normally practiced at the present time, often for getting out of paying taxes, taxes, <laughs> contributing in a more sacrificial way to the common good, even if it's the common good in the temple. And criteria of death considered abstract. Brain death or cardiac arrest as a criteria part could not be carried out without taking the life things such as uh, such as okay. Everybody hear me all right now? No fading. <laughs> the, uh, although organ transplants and criteria of death considered abstract are two different things and uh, it might be studied quite independently of one another in fact without something like brain death or cardiac arrest or other such things which in the past were simply in called clinical death. There were signs, as it were, uh, indications that told the physician attending that there doesn't seem to be any life here. Seen, as far as he can tell. But whether that corresponds to the moment in which the soul and the body separate, the soul and the body is a true cadaver, corpse, no, a corpse incapable of being resuscitated uh, in any, uh, any, 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 way, any way, except as were in the sense that the devils sometimes have been said to make pa dead corpses dance, as in the famous case in Paris around the beginning of the 18th, 18th, uh, 18th century. Whether that is simply a dead body being manipulated as though it were, uh, you might manipulate any other, uh, other, 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 other thing. Uh, they come together. Why the interest in brain death as a substitute for the ordinary, you know, ordinary criteria? Because it's easier to come to but this person is probably dead. We can cut, uh, cut him up. Why do we have, Why not wait? Because if you wait too long, long, even a couple of seconds after after the real death, the organs are useless. They're for the most part. Now we are not talking about exactly skin or blood. That's not what is meant, meant here. Blood replaces itself. The skin will easily replace itself in ordinary uh, sort. Uh, that was never been any particular, uh, particular problem. The problem arises, rises when in order to get, get a vital organ, 
vital organ is perhaps the modern term that describes what was, was, was being discussed under other terms in the old moral theology, theology books. Books, uh, uh, books uh, uh, you have to, as we're practically speaking, extract the organ before the person is, de uh, is, uh, is dead. Now, all of this runs into conflict uh, with uh, the traditional teaching of what is called, quote, mutilation. Mutilation, in the moral sense, not in the physical, because if I scratch myself, we say, why? I've mutilated myself in some uh, way. And it's a broad use of the term. It means, as it were, were the removal of an organ, a vital organ, that will not replace, it, uh, replace itself. One which, in technical terminology of the past, is necessary for the body to be integral and without integrity, life is, uh, is, is, is threatened. Or, as in the case of sterilization, uh, permanent sterilization, suppresses permanently a vital function. And there is no vital function of the individual so important to the entire human family as that of the power to procreate. This is one of the points that has been made over the centuries. The attempts to suppress procreation totally is ultimately an attempt to, as it were, destroy the entire human family. If there are no children, a community disappears. An aging community finds it more and more difficult to support itself for various, uh, various reasons. We see it happening in many parts of the Western world. Hence the importance uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the definitions and of the rules that have been made. It is an issue of life or death, sometimes in the case of abortion for individuals, but in the case of contraception for the whole human race. And in the case of organ transplants, uh, the very dignity of the human person, this is a central point of the recent talk, just two months ago, of the Pope. The key to the solution of the dilemma, what do I do when my parents or grandparents or my children, children are at that point where it seems that if they live any longer, they're simply useless. They're simply wasting time and money. Let's get it over with fast and stop, uh, stop the treatment. Now, you'd be surprised I cannot give you chapter and verse as a priest because I hear too many confessions. But it is a fact that many people really don't know what to do. They're confused. And sometimes they agree to things which, according to Catholic moral principles and sound natural law principles, should never be done. And afterwards, they have a terrible sense of guilt. What have they, have they done? Here, I'm not condemning anyone, anyone who's made the wrong. I simply point out, point out that the situations that we face in, the, in our present circumstances are really agonizing, not just for the person who's dying, but for the person who is caring for them. What should they do? And under pressure, many people, people, uh, uh, not with any fault on their part, they lose any any sense of what they should do. They're uh, they're uh, browbeaten almost. Into, uh, into this. I'll give you another example from priestly experience. Fifty years ago, when I was a young priest, going along the road, you see an accident. It was common for every priest to stop. Can I be of assistance? Perhaps just to hear the confession of of, of someone. Possibly someone who was thinking about being baptized. And every priest brought along has a, 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 little, a little bit of holy water. No, that's enough. A few drops, sprinkle, etc. It can be taken care of. Or here is conf a person's conf uh, uh, confession. Now you can't, if you stop, you can't get a priest stops, you can't get near the person who is being, being attended. Even for a second. It's a blessing. Or here is confession, uh, uh, poss uh, possibly. I'll say, what is the reason? Well, maybe they think a priest dressed like this is some devil from hell. I don't know, just like the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, 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 with horns and tail disguised underneath. I hear it here in the back. They're trying to look up and see what they got on underneath. Uh, uh, but sometimes it's because they're already cutting them up. Organ, uh, organs, fresh organs, are worth sometimes millions. It depends on what it is, like a heart. I, maybe I'm exaggerating, but there's big money involved. The Pope alludes to the commercialization of medicine, in, in, in these things, whereas at this point there shouldn't be any commercial interest at all. But why hide? Uh, that's the first point. Secondly, uh, at least on the, uh, on the medical side, a recent article that appeared in, in the summer, last summer, in the New England Journal of Medicine, that's a bellwether of what's coming along. These both, they weren't particularly Catholic, but at least they were honest enough to admit that the brain death 
criteria was worthless. <laughs> it didn't indicate death at all. They simply frankly said that, that the person's still alive, if that's all you can say. They simply admitted there are too many exceptions. If you have an exception, one is enough, as it were, to explode or implode the, 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 the criteria. Therefore, let's, let's face it. They said, the only way you can do this is to have the person, but again, now, the sick man has the right, as it were, to determine this is the moment of death. Even though he could continue to live for ten more years, yet his life is valueless and so, so he agrees, as it were, provided he doesn't have to suffer too much pain, but I don't know who can guarantee what pain you suffer when you're starved to death or put to sleep, etc. Unfortunately, those who put people to sleep haven't experienced it themselves to be able to say, empirically that this is the case. Anyway, they're suggesting that we should legal, uh, make legal suicide, uh, assisted suicide legal in these instances and then we could have lots of fresh, uh, fresh organs. Death has nothing to do with the question of when you can take or, or organs out of, uh, uh, out of, out of uh, a person. As long as he's agreeable, very agreeable, we'll legalize suicide in these instances. Of course, if you legalize it in this instance, you know what's going to happen. It'll be legalized in a lot of other instances which are declared to be useful. Watch that word, useful. Utilitarianism is simply a fancy name for changing the ultimate point of reference in moral matters from God to me. Pragmatism. And that reverses the name. Charity, therefore, becomes mere sentimentality. Advantageous to me, whatever it is, is, is to you. But after all, you should be glad that it's advantageous to, uh, advantageous to me. Because after all, you have only a few more minutes to live, and I should have... Uh, I wouldn't have, but I should have. That's the, uh, why should I have it? And you shouldn't have it. That's a purely arbitrary deci uh, decision, decision, and it makes, therefore, all love, all charity, radically irrational. What is irrational is unreasonable, and what is unreasonable ultimately is defined as tyrannical. Who's the tyrant? Me. All the world is organized in view of my utility. These are the things we have to reflect upon and then we can understand better why it is that we should strive to perfect our observance of charity. Love should be humble. If it's not humble, it's not love of goodness for its own sake, the goodness of God, but it's love of me for my own, uh, for my own sake, which is to go ahead. And how did I come into being in the first place? Because someone they loved me first. That is the answer, answer to all arguments, as it were, that are utilitarian. Utilita anyway, those, the, uh, those are the two, the two points. And how do you ultimately justify this? Well, after all, Christ gave his, gave his life, that is, he died, uh, he committed suicide so that we might live. But did he? He never did. He said, woe to him by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Yes, the Father permitted this, part of his providential plan, but he didn't ordain that his son be condemned to death. And he didn't ordain that any of us be condemned unjustly in that, fa in, in, in that fashion. What he insists upon is that every man have the time that he has allotted for him to live. That was given, as it were, with that m wonderful moment of procreation, which is the best way, a way of putting it. And we are allotted plenty of time, even if uh, we lie in a bed for ten more years. But that is a part of God's, God's plan. To reject that uh, is ultimately to reject God. And to reject God is to be without hope. Saint Paul. An atheist is one ultimately, uh, the atheist, no prayer of God exists. He doesn't want him to exist, but he does. But to be without God is to be without hope. That is to reje re reject him. It is to render the whole human situation at the present time absolutely hopeless. Well, we must admit is Christ didn't commit suicide, but he willingly, as it were, was, uh, willingly allowed certain things to, uh, to happen because, as it were, because of the plan of his father. Yeah. Uh, to, as it were, for many minutes, we shan't go into it any further, but uh, we can sum it up onto the phrase which was popularized especially, but it's not new by Pope John, but redemptive value of suffering. Therefore, let us see how the Holy Father, the points that he makes, he makes it in the uh, in the uh, discourse. 
uh, Scots, which he uh, uh, personally presented to those meeting on November the 7th of last uh, year in, in Rome, a symposium on organ transplant uh, 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 plants, which involved a very heated arguments about brain death. Those theologians were absolutely opposed to it. And those theologians who want to innovate, no, we can accept brain death as a sufficient criterion for permitting organ transplants. And I don't mean merely the modernists, because I know a couple of very traditional theologians think it's all right. There's no problem, problem with it at all. Whereas I have a considerable problem, uh, problem, problem especially, especially when various states and ultimately perhaps the whole country will, as it were, uh, legalize the take, if, for instance, a person is unconscious in an accident, as were seemingly will die very quickly. You can, as it were, as long as he has not uh, said, I do not want to donate organs, you can go ahead and do it. Even though uh, 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 Connecticut is one point in instance, uh, instance where this, this sort of a thing is constantly being, uh, being in, uh, in, in event. That's where all the problems about legalizing contraceptives began. Griswold versus Connecticut, a famous case started about 60, 50 or 60 years ago and brought to a term. And they said, no, it won't lead to abortion uh, legalizing. Well, within 10 years, they had Roe versus Wade, uh, uh, Wade and abortion became the uh, legal, legal thing. You, uh, you can... Uh, you have the choice in some instances to kill somebody you don't want around for whatever, whatever, whatever reason. Now it's not just abortion, uh, abortion but infanticide. It's the two states, Oregon and Washington, have legalized, uh, uh, legalized assisted, su uh, assisted su uh, suicide. I suppose the next thing will be assisted murder. You know what they used to joke about 60 years ago, Murder Incorporated. It was a radio program by that, by that title. Everybody laughed. It's not even possible. This is, this is crazy. But it's like, uh, it's like as were the, uh, the 1920s and 30s when they had Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers running on, uh, in the 24th century AD when the space travel was it would come 50 years later that's what everybody was doing but why you would want to uh, roam around the, the room uh, the, mo the moon uh, I suppose be a lunatic uh, the lunatics well, that's where the word lunatic comes, uh, comes from the whole point of science uh, is not to as we do everything that is possible technically but to do that was reasonable the above all is reasonable is sound medicine and here's where we see sound science sound medicine ultimately presupposes good morals, and good morals ultimately rests upon the full understanding of how and why God made this world for the sake of Jesus and Mary. That's where the spirituality comes in. So the first point that the Pope makes, and it's a very important one, even though it's not explained in great detail, but the theologians understand what he means. means organ donation, he says, he says, is a wonderful progress scientifically, but the mere fact that certain things are possible some good, some not so. It can only be, de what's the difference between it? If we have a sound moral norm. What is the sound moral norm in this instance? It's organ donation. Donation is not a day unless it is motivated by charity and received in charity. If you begin to come, this is the first point of the if you begin, as it were, because of need of organs, uh, demand, uh, supply and demand, what are you doing automatically? If you basically are inspired, you're commercializing the person. To commercialize the person is to simply put him on the level of any other tool, on the level of a pig or cow. <laughs> the cow gets too old to produce any milk, what do you usually do? You, get your, uh, you slaughter the cow and we eat it. Is this is what you're going to come to? Reinstitute cannibalism, etc. They say that there's nothing like human flesh as it were to delight the, pa uh, the palate. I don't. Uh, I think I would be. <laughs> I, I couldn't get, uh, get get near. The Filipinos have a have a way of preparing eggs. And what it says, can I say? I can't remember the na name. Uh, uh, name. And uh, you see, as it were, the half-formed uh, chicken inside on special uh, special occasion. Nothing particularly immoral, but uh, I. Uh, the only thing I couldn't eat when I was in the Philippines. Uh, I, I, their eggs were wonderful, but when I saw, saw that chicken, uh, chick, uh, chicken there, it was a bit, bit, uh, uh, a bit, a bit too much. Uh, too much. Uh, the, uh, the Pope refers to this: uh, the, the commercialization of embryos. <laughs> for what they call it, uh, they want to legalize it again, stem cell research using, uh, using embryos. It means the death of a person. person. 
It's the same thing. <laughs> you know, present it to somebody to eat or uh, use it for some other uh, advantage. The principle here is once we admit that kind of a principle, we have a different kind of spirituality. It's a kind nobody should wish on his worst, worst uh, even his worst, uh, worst enemy. That was the remark of Blessed Charles of Austria, the late emperor, who was kind of uh, beatified by Pope John Paul II. One of the things he said when he was being pressured by the German Kaiser to ship Lenin into Russia to get Russia out of the war so the, uh, so the Germans could win, win in France was, I would never do that thing. thing. I don't care if we lose the war. I will not do something that I would not wish, even on my worst enemy, to bring in somebody into a country that would uh, would ruin what is a basically Christ, still a Christian order of things and substitute one which in his mind was radically diabolic. He was right. And then they did it another way to get, uh, get him in. Uh, he, uh, he was almost, as it were, the victim of a, 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 Ger a German attack for refusing to do what they wanted to get the war over with faster, in their favor, naturally. Uh, 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 naturally. Now, for the first, the donation of organs is a witness to charity. That's a very important point. Uh, the, uh, the Pope argues that organ donation, unless a simple donation, in no way legislated that is, you're compelled to do it. The law presumes that you want to do it, or, or that sort of thing. Or, as it were, because big money is in, in, involved. It's a simple gift. If nobody should be getting rich uh, uh, in accord with the very nature of charity to be fine metaphysically and not by way of instances. Well, isn't it great that you did this uh, for me? And don't we feel, feel great about it? About it? Now, both donor and recipient must be motivated by true charity. I must not presume that my life is more valuable than your life. As persons, we are equal before God. There are no checkbooks before the pearly gate. There is no damage control. Well, I was a cardinal of the Holy Roman Church. <laughs> I get in without being checked, as they do with the security points. <laughs> You're going to answer the questions, yes or no, no, because Christ already knows the answer, and you can't fool him. You did this, you did that, you're so on, yes, all right. <laughs> 20 years in purgatory. Or if you, are, uh, if you are, or if you are in the state of sin, you end up uh, in H E W -L, L. These are the basic facts we must keep in mind. There's nothing unjust or arbitrary about that. God is just, but He's not cruel. As Saint Thomas makes that important point. When God punishes, it's always for a reason. Reason is just. And if we think about it, if you weren't just, there wouldn't be any moral order. There wouldn't be any respect for per persons. And the second point here is what the Pope makes. We're all equal. You can't say my life is more valuable, therefore we should have stem cell be sure to be sure that I have the right kind of medicines to deal with certain possible diseases that I have at a certain, a certain, a certain point. If this is, uh, it's not possible to cure me, death is not the worst thing. If I'm in the state of grace, I go to a better life. Well, there is no death anymore. Uh, 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 anymore. Now for the, his, the second point he makes, the history of modern medicine is basically one of great progress, such as to permit a life ever more worthy for one who suffers. He says a recent example is the possibility of organ transplant. But precisely because it is such, and the demand for organs exceeds the donations, it is critically important to reflect on the moral norms involved in the procedures attending on the harvesting of you. If you don't, no, it's, it's simply as a, a tyrannical act. It's technically possible, it's intelligible, but it doesn't make it right. And that's the key, po uh, uh, key point. Genuine progress in medicine must always be governed by good what Bad morals, as the old doctor in Albany said once to me, and I still can't remember his name, bad morals is bad medicine. And the more directly and immediately medicine deals with the dignity of the person, the more necessary it is to be sure you're following sound moral principles. And the principles that the Pope lays down, even though he doesn't use all the technical scholastic language, are identical as we shall see. Third point. Among the, I'm running out of time, so I've got to go a little faster. <laughs> that's, that, that's the, among the norms is above all this. The human body, unlike that of the beast, don't well. Human body, bovine body, serpent body, simian, uh, I mean, uh, simian uh, body are not in the same species of body. Uh, it's nice and neat, logical uh, uh, from the ancients, but there is a radical difference between beast 
and man. It's the difference between non-person and person. The person, and this is a stoic error, is identified solely with the soul. That's all right if you're an angel. But who tempted the Adam and Eve to think of themselves as angels? A fallen angel. The human body is, um, reflects the personhood. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit for that reason. And that is the reason, as the Pope points out, even with the corpse, certain rules must be followed. You cannot treat a human corpse as you would an animal corpse. As, for instance, in the days, penal days in England, the heads of the martyrs were kicked around like footballs. That's a mortal sin. You have to have a certain respect for the mystery of the resurrection to come. There is nothing wrong. There are stories of saints uh, 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 and martyrs who provided a leg, etc., after they were mar mar martyred. Miraculously, it could be used, as it were, to uh, help someone, as it were, who was missing a, uh, missing a leg. Sometimes, as it were, he had a white leg and sometimes had a black leg together. As a, whether or not uh, you can leave aside, as it were, uh, whatever questions you have. Don't, please don't ask me any questions. I'm merely stating the fact. That the idea of transplanting human organs from one human body to another is not a new idea. The technique is something which is new at the present time. But the technique, as a word, must never, never violate the dignity of the human body. And so long as a body and soul are united, an attempt to take vital organs or to suppress vital func uh, 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 functions is a mutilation. And mutilation is something, in this sense, intrinsically evil. The principle of totality, whereby you can take off a leg, as gangrene, etc., uh, threatens that. But here you are intervening to save the life of an individual person. Consequently, there is a second effect, the principle of double effect, that follows for it. Obviously, you're missing a leg, but you're still alive. Body and soul are still united. But to, as it were, directly take a leg from me, who am not sick, as, as, as it were, not uh, yet, don't have to have work, and give it to you, uh, uh, you, is a direct intervention which uh, aims at taking life from me. That cannot be a bit. That is intrinsically ev uh, e evil. It's forbidden by the fifth commandment for the same reason that murder is forbidden. Only the Lord has the right to determine these things and govern, govern the. I don't have the right to say it's time for you to die. What's your okay. but, but I have to take. Well, I have to take care of you. That's charity. And to refuse that is to show oneself a pragmatist. I'm only interested in what is convenient for me. That's not charity. I don't see convenience is wrong. But I say to govern one's life by convenience is something which is radically wrong. wrong. To arrogate the power to determine, the, uh, determine this is to play God. All modern dictators and all ancient dictators have played God. One of the worst was the dictator of Rome under, uh, when our Lord was uh, condemned by Pontius Pilate, who uh, knew he was innocent but condemned him because he was scared out of his wits that the paranoid in Rome, Caeparius uh, Augustus, one, one of the worst, uh, uh, worst ones, would take his head off. Which he did the next, uh, you know, practically reduced him to uh, uh, nothing because of a compl uh, complaint of the Jews. So it was easy to arouse his suspicion. So he used the Praetorian Guard, which is the equivalent of the KGB or the SS or anything of that uh, of, of, uh, of that kind to keep to keep uh, keep uh, keep uh, uh, keep poor. As regards the donation of organs to be taken from the donor while alive, respect for the personal identity of the donor requires that said donation involves no risk to the donor's health and his personal identity. His personal identity involves not just the soul, but also the body. Here we are talking what is the basis for judging mutilation in the moral sense uh, to, to, to be wrong. And that's the obstacle to mass organ transplants at the present time. And now the tendency is to simply say, well, we're, we're going to worry about you with dead or alive. Alive. Uh, alive. Uh, enough that he agrees as were to assisted suicide. Uh, 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 suicide. And the final, as it were, one, one is from the dead person. Unless there is some real consent, at least through uh, relatives, etc., it's wrong to take, uh, take those organs. If the person himself didn't want it done, done, then there is no question of donation. 
If there's no donation, you're simply commercializing hate. And that is disrespect to the body that will one day rise. Uh, arise. And so, as it were, with this we see, uh, we, we, we see, uh, I'll con uh, I've, I've gone over my limit here a little, uh, little bit, I simply point out that some people were scandalized the Pope didn't read a, read a chapter from St. Thomas's Summa or from one of the old moralists, the Jesuit casuists, etc., which have been, all, uh, been very fine, but they wouldn't have gotten, uh, they wouldn't have met head on, as it were, in a polite way, right, those who are questioning the, uh, the tradition. But as he pointed out in the address, the first Christmas he was Pope to the cardinals and bishops of Acuria, there is a correct way of interpreting, translating, and there is an incorrect. That of continuity and renewal, that of discontinuity, introducing something radically different and new, and which leads to schism. A breakup of the ch uh, of 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 Christian uh, of, of Christian u uh, 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 Christian unity, but he stresses quite uh, quite clearly all, all the, uh, the traditional principles. Uh, first, the importance of charity defined in terms of the object that is the very goodness of God. That means recognizing those things which are reserved alone to the Lord. No, it's not wrong, as it were, in a fight in a battle, as it were, to. And to protect an innocent per person to kill the attacker. But once again, this is something that God okays. To execute a person for certain crimes is not in itself, in itself evil. Whether we should do it, uh, prudent to do it is another question. We leave that aside. But once again, capital punishment, the rules of governing a just war, are established by the... It is he who authorizes taking of life in certain limited cases. If you don't have his permission, the permission, if you do not enjoy his authority, you can't do it. Lynch law is evil. I have no right at all on my own, simply because I don't like what you did to me, so boom, <laughs> right between the eyes, bullhead. Well, there are people who do that sort of thing. That is wrong. And no amount of righteous indignation works the justice of God. That's also scriptural. You have to take all, and not just one text out of, uh, out of, out of context. Secondly, he makes perfectly clear where mutilation, or God is not, where an operation to extract, uh, uh, to uh, cut off a, a diseased uh, 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 limb, such as a, uh, an arm or hand or finger or whatever that cannot, cannot be able to save the life of, that pertains only to the individual person. It does not pertain to the moral unit. This was a point made clear during the Nazi controversy, who maintained precisely that. that the principle of town, since we are all part of the same, same great, uh, great bo uh, 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 body of the, uh, of the noblest race, 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 race of them all, anybody, as it were, who was a disgrace, because a disgrace, as it were, could be executed, mutilated, because a threat to the unity of the body. And there were some theologians in Germany at that time that tried to sell, explain the mystical body on those terms. As though the unity of the church was that of the unity of a physical body. That is a horrendous error. It was condemned by Pope Pius XII in the encyclical Mystery Corpus 1943. Precisely because certain theologians of Germany were not coming close to, but had already adopted some of the basic principles justifying the cruelties of the Nazi, reg Nazi regime. But let us not think that only Germans accept those sort of things. We find many, many places in the, uh, in the, uh, in the world where the same, same ideas are now al Quran and accepted as being the normal thing by, uh, by, uh, by, 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 by majority. The second point is ultimately, as well, the Pope is pointing out, all science ultimately converges on medicine, as it was understood in the Middle Ages still is. That's why we're interested in science. <laughs> what good is it going to be to us, above all, where we need a cure? That brings up the whole problem of charity and suffering, and how it is to be carried out. The importance, ultimately, in these questions of remembering the cross of Christ. To those who, uh, those who are scandalized, those who don't believe, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's horrendous. 
But to those who have a faith, they see clearly that the answer to all of this is, uh, is to be found, uh, found in always living in a court. And to recognize that the conditions for organ transplants, as were, in addition to these consider, must always involve on both sides as genuine charity to give out of charity and also to receive out of charity, not as something do me. That's the give, uh, giveaway in these, uh, these instances. So, uh, there are some other applications I could go into in great, great length, uh, length, but I simply point, uh, point out that sound catechesis, Jesus, you don't have to be a PhD as were to understand these things, but it is important to review the catechism, all of them. This recent one, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, but go back and see that there is a tremendous continuity. I have some texts here from Pope John Paul II. What the Pope said in this recent discourse is a kind of summary of many of the things that the late Holy Father was insisting upon. And then effectively, without using the term, he excluded what is called brain, uh, brain, uh, brain, uh, brain death. You must be, you cannot use probability, probabilism in these instances. You must be sure yeah, it is the, uh, it is, uh, the uh, view that is puts your safer for whom? So, uh, safer for the person. You cannot as we're fool around with probabilities when you deal with justice, when you deal with salvation. So anyway, I'll stop a moment uh, and see uh, if you have questions. And if we don't have time to do many this morning, uh, we can go on this evening. I won't be so long-winded. I'll simply summarize a little bit. Let's go ahead. There are some people who uh, who have uh, who are healthy and have donated a kidney to someone who needs a kidney. Um, yeah, that's one of the that's one of the cases that's most most, most argued. But you have to you have to show that two kidneys isn't uh, normal to in, in, in integrity. It's not a question of whether the person is reasonably 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 healthy afterwards. That's a utilitarian criterion. The question here is whether the person is integral afterwards. You can get rid of one one one, one kidney, my kidneys, if it is the disease uh, kidney. If that's the only solution to saving my life. The further question is whether you can take one of my healthy kidneys and transfer it. The fact that I don't die immediately is not the issue. The question is whether or not this is integral to, the, the, uh, to, 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 to my person as a composite of body and, uh, body, uh, body and soul. I cannot treat, the Pope states, I cannot treat my body a body as a quarry for uh, for extra uh, because I have two eyes. Can you take one out? Well, people say I can see equally well with one eye. I, I don't entirely agree <laughs> agree with them because I have sight only practically speaking only in one eye at the present time. It seems to me that I saw a great deal better when I had two. And since I'm completely deaf in, in the left, uh, left ear, which is embarrassing on, uh, on occasions, uh, I can appreciate why two ears are a great advantage. But here it's not the question of uh, adva advantage. That's the whole point. What can or cannot be done must be decided in terms of, you might say, absolutes here. There are limits on what we can do, morally speaking, with the knowledge which we, we have. If we say there are no limits, we are playing God. Well, but, but I know that modern, uh, uh, all of us, we're all children of our, our, our age. We see it in terms of, okay, well, what's wrong with it? If it doesn't, doesn't particularly harm me, I go on for 60 more years with one, one kidney. I don't, ki I, uh, I don't kick the bucket. But that's, that's the false, uh, uh, the whole issue here, is that the correct way of f framing the question? Well, some people are framing it in, this, in, in, in the context of charity. I'm being charitable. Yeah. To the Pope's question is this charity. My, that's my question. <laughs> this is my question too. The answer is, answer is, if you violate the basic norms of the natural, natural law, which is the basis of the Christian law, it's not charity. Subjectively, there may be no imputability. You may be sincere and so on and so forth. But from an objective point of view, point of, point of view you're undermining the whole basis of the, of the natural moral, uh, moral order, a personal or, or order. 
what I tried to point out in the beginning, that once you make an exception in any of, the, in any of these cases, you open the door, as it were, to other exceptions. It seems to be restricted. It's only because I'm dying or, or because I'm suffering, uh, suffering a great deal. But it's a curious thing, the human, uh, the human mind, or maybe I should say the human heart, has a way of jumping. Well, this is disadvantageous to, to, to me. I find it oppressive, uh, opp oppressive that you have uh, more money, than, so I think I'll, I'll simply take your money. I know people who think like that. Uh, you may say it's a, a rare, but once, once you begin making exceptions on this basis, any place along, along the line. It's only a matter of time when you begin, as it were, as we are seeing happen, legalizing uh, assisted suicide. How far can you go with that? If a person politically incorrect, you can say, well, maybe he should volunteer. He's, uh, he's causing a lot of people guilt trips. So uh, uh, let's uh, persuade him in charity uh, to agree to assisted suicide, uh, to bite the, uh, 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 bite the pill as they used to do in the, the Nazi, uh, Nazi lines, one of the ones, uh, make the poor person who was condemned, as it were, or were, were take, a, uh, take a poison pill and say, bite. It was in a certain sense, that was the way they got rid of Rommel after the assassination attempt of Hitler in 1944. Uh, my, my point here is, uh, is if you admit one, for the sake of charity, an exception, in norms which are ab 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 absolute, uh, you have opened, uh, uh, opened the door to total moral social chaos. When will it be my turn to be persuaded out of charity to take myself out of, uh, 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 out, uh, uh, out, of, uh, out of this world so the world can be a better place for somebody else? Anyway, that's as far, I don't want to repeat what I said before. No. If you take a pragmatic approach to charity, and many people do, and I don't say they're going to be, uh, be merely because they're influenced by their times, that they're necessarily bad people. Uh, people. But what I am saying is, is that those have the responsibility for the common, uh, common good must attend to, these, uh, attend to these things. Hard cases make bad law. That's what the title of my second conference. Uh, uh, conference. Uh, everybody tends to want to say, I, I'm really suffering. Uh, suffering. Is it, uh, can't we do something about, about, uh, about this? Can't we modify things so I don't suffer so, uh, so much? Well, yes, up to the point that you don't, don't modify the things that God says are not modifiable. That's, uh, we're talking about two different philosophies here. And the, therefore, the speculative question becomes, which one is correct? Yeah. I'll end. I see they want me to go. Yeah, go ahead. I understand what, you, I understand what you're saying, and, and as I sit here thinking about what you're saying, one part of me says, well, you know, it seems to be you're making a huge leap from, you know, being someone who is saying, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to remain healthy, I'm doing out of charity, out of love for another mm -hmm. individual to give them a chance. Right. You're going from there to saying, well, you know, it's going to it's going to escalate into something like euthanasia and so on and so forth. And 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 part of me says, well, that seems to be a huge quantum leap. Well, that's but, a quantum, yeah, from that but, point. Then, on the other hand, <laughs> the other part of me says, society being what it is has proven that you give a little and you end up taking a lot. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a that's an ad hoc argument that I use. What I'm trying to point out is that I'm the one who's not making the leap. The leap has been made by all who introduce yeah. the utilitarian philosophy, which has been around for several century, uh, centuries now, and make it the standard of law. Law. This is where the pro problem is. The second other problem is, of course, there's an inadequate catechesis. People no longer understand the difference between natural law at the biological, purely sub-personal level and natural law in the traditional Christian sense, the law written in our hearts the hearts even of those which, who don't know, know Christ St. Paul refers to, uh, to, to this in the, uh, in the second uh, in the, uh, in the first and second chapter of the letter to the, to, to, to the Romans but it won't go any further here I simply say I am, I am simply saying, saying at the present time those who do not accept let's say the teaching of St. Paul on the natural law and the objective criteria for, 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 for charity, charity have gotten themselves into an extraordinarily dangerous situation. That may affect both the 
the community as a whole and also their eternal, eternal salvation eventually. I'll give you other examples from history. Lord Acton, much as I disagree with some of his views, but he says some things that were very true. true. Those who don't know history are condemned to repeat it. That's what a Dutch lady 25 years ago I was conversing with in Rome told me. They said, I'll never go into a hospital. I said, I was one of the ones, few Dutch people who opposed all the things that were introduced into Holland between 40 and 50 years ago. It didn't take, it didn't take them long. He said, we sacrificed, risked our lives and sacrificed our lives during the war to oppose what the, what the Nazis were doing or trying to introduce. And now we've gone, well, we've done worse. He said, if I go into a hospital, I'll be dead in 24 hours. <laughs> because I'm a persona non grata. And this is a thing, a thing. But again, I'm not trying to use an argument here. I'm trying to use a spiritual argument, which is fundamentally philosophical, of course, for as well. And not to say it happened here, we don't want it to happen there. That's, uh, in a certain sense, uh, a use of pragmatism to move, uh, move on. I'm simply saying, saying the pragmatic approach to these questions, questions say, well, it doesn't harm me, go ahead and do it, you know, is an inadequate, uh, basically a false, a false approach, and ultimately must lead to turning. God intended the world to be an antechamber of heaven. It will become something else once once this uh, once this attitude takes hold of the uh, of those who have control of the of the common good. And secondly, at worst, persons, individuals who subscribe to it, whether they're the ones, as it were, trying to impose on others, or whether others, as it were, are for convenience, make themselves slaves, as did so many Catholics and Protestants in Germany during the Nazi Zeit. And they tried to excuse, well, we are only obeying orders. But we're not permitted to obey orders which are false. We must always obey God on, on, these, uh, on these things. That's the basis, even though we don't see what are the consequences. Yes? Well, here, can we just close with a prayer? Can we close with a prayer and we can... All right. Uh, the, save your questions for tonight. Because we're, not, we're going to be on the same, same basic subject, except in what are called, quote-unquote, emergency contraceptives. Is there any such thing? Or is it a misnomer? Maybe what they intend to indicate is all right, but that's the wrong name for it. But what I want to put point, point out, why is contraception intrinsically evil, not just abortion? abortion? We have to reflect and we'll see what comes to the same fundamental problem. Who sets the rules for the beginning of personal life? I can do whatever I want to make a better cow. It may not help the cow, but it help, makes, certainly makes the beef much better. Uh, uh, seedless grapes are great for me. There's no problem getting rid of, uh, pretending I'm not spitting the grapes all, all, all over. Uh, but it doesn't help the grape. <laughs> no more, uh, uh, no more grapevines. And, and grapevines do cease to live. Uh, live. Uh, that's, that's the point. That's all right. What's called micro evolution uh, improve. But why do we want to improve the animal species or plant species? Because it benefits us, not necessarily because it benefits the species. As long as we do it, we uh, do it within the limits that govern human human activity. We there are possessions within those limits. It's all right. It's not cruel cru uh, cruelty. But to think that uh, think that killing an animal or rare species is the worse than uh, worse than uh, uh, or aborting uh, aborting an in in infant represents as were a far more serious sin uh, sin. Uh, this is the point that uh, perhaps uh, as we're coming to. Is it wrong to adopt systematically this kind of philosophy, ultimately, ultimately theology? Whose theology is it? And, thus is the question. and this is what we must meditate upon. This is why we're dealing with this during a retreat, because if we don't have the counsel of Our Lady, if we don't have the light of the Holy Spirit, right, we're, we're not going to make any progress in these matters, no matter how much, uh, how much we dial, uh, 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 dial. I've known many doctors over the course of the years, and above all is the, is the doctors, physicians, the ones who are true Christians, they agree with that. Mm -hmm. They didn't want anything to do with this uh, as we're total freedom to do anything you please as long as it works.